In this video, we're going to explore um, how to analyze permission data from uh, Frank's diffusion cell uh, experiments. So once you've collected your absorbance data from your experiments, you would uh, enter them into these uh, spreadsheets. Um, now, this spreadsheet is a layout in a specific way uh, that, that, that works for me. And you may take this as an example, which you may follow, or you may create your own uh, spreadsheet layout. Uh, it's entirely up to you, uh, whatever works for you. But this works for me. Okay. Now the data are entered into the uh, into these columns. Um, now in my experiment, I've got uh, three uh, replicates for each treatment. I've got three treatments altogether. Right. So the treatments are control, uh, CPE one and CPE two. And for each treatment, I've got three replicates, and these are denoted by the number that follows the decimal point in that uh, label. Apart from absorbance data, I also have um, dilution factor um, information entered into this spreadsheet. Um, so um, that dilution factor uh, relates to the uh, to whether the sample, a particular sample, uh, has been diluted uh, for um, for the absorbance reading or not. Now there may be instances where, for example, if the absorbance reading is so high that it, it exceeds the a linear dynamic range of the equipment and hence you cannot derive a uh, concentration um, uh, reliably from absorbance uh, readings then you may need to dilute that uh, uh, the sample in order to um, in order to read the absorbance within the the linear dynamic range um, so that's the dilution factor in there now on this side of the spreadsheet, I have information regarding um, the calibration uh, curve uh, slope so um, and the volume of the receptive fluid in the French diffusion cell and uh, the diffusion surface area of the skin. All right, so in order to convert uh, absorbance to concentration, you make use of the um, calibration curve slope. And the the calculation is very simple. Simply that is absorbance divided by the slope of the calibration curve. Okay, that gives you uh, the concentration of the sample that you actually measured. I just need to fix that cell by putting a dollar sign in front of the column and row numbers. Okay, do that for all of the samples. Now at this point we haven't taken into account the dilution factor. We we'll do that in the next step. Um, then the next step is to calculate the instantaneous amount permeated per unit area. In other words, you're converting uh, a concentration reading to an absolute amount in micrograms, um, and divide that by the surface area. And therefore, to calculate this, this, um, these values, you need to know the volume of the receptor fluid, the diffusion of surface area of the skin, and also the dilution factor. Okay. Now this is simply the instantaneous concentration multiplied by the uh, receptor volume, multiplied by the uh, dilution factor, and divided by the diffusion of surface area. Again, I will fix these uh, cell references. and do that for all of the cells, uh, all of the samples. Okay, so that's the instantaneous amount per meter per unit area. Now the next step is to convert instantaneous data into cumulative data. Now in order to do that, for the first time point, we simply take the value, the instantaneous value as it is, and put that into that cell. Then for, for the next um, something point, we would take the corresponding instantaneous amounts and add the cumulative amount that came before it and do that for all the samples. Okay, so that gives you the cumulative data. And we will uh, we will uh, discuss how to calculate a steady state flux and lag time from the cumulative data in the next video.